but it's for me too. I like to make sure. All right, that's a great spot there. So let's let's see if this is a dark enough color and it's not. Let's add a little more ultramarine blue, a little more umber. Blend that around there. Now, turn this here so you can see this a little better maybe. Although we're not doing all the little limbs, the important thing is that you get the main trunk here. And you get this nice little, it's kind of a forked trunk. Now look, I'm going to um, be a little creative myself. I love, as you know, to paint tree limbs. So I'm always going to add some interesting little turns and twists to my trees that a lot of people don't do. And it's to me, it just adds that much more interesting character to the painting. See, and that neat? I just love that tree. <clears throat> Let's branch on out over here. These are the things where I get lost, folks. You know, so every one of us have favorite things that we like to do in painting. Some of us can get carried away with these flowers. Some can get carried away with the leaves. Some can get carried away with some other things. I just love to paint tree limbs. There's just something about a very uniquely designed tree limb or set of tree limbs that just adds character to the painting and that's what I like to focus on sometimes. Now let's take a look at that tree here and you can see that it was an old dogwood or redbud tree. It's very, there are not many leaves here at the bottom or any blooms, they're mostly across the top. So you see what's happened here already. We'll come back and add some of the <clears throat> pink but the pink's already sort of in place. If you'll notice up there, we don't have to add a whole lot, but we do need to add enough to cover up a few of the limbs and sort of let them kind of hide. See how they just kind of disappear into the leaves and things. So let's just take a little bit more of the pink and just kind of here and there, just sort of dry brush in a few quick more, a few more quick pink colored blooms here. And this will more or less uh, suggest or signify that the uh, tree is in full bloom. This, by the way, is uh, evidently a fairly old, old uh, red bud. You can tell those because they are very gnarly. They usually get pretty tall, but they generally spread out like this when they get a little older. Some of them get real wide and round. Some don't. They're a very interesting, unique, and strange tree. Dogwoods uh, in this part of the country, of course, are abundant, so are the red buds. Dogwoods like a lot of shade. Your red buds can take the sun a little more. And, uh, okay, so you just sort of hide the limbs into the rest of it. And that makes it easy because you don't have to be specific about it. All right. Now then, let's go ahead and start highlighting again a little brighter. For instance, now, the edge of the rocks, the pathway here, a little bit here, and, you know, just all around this section here, let's go ahead and take this gray color we have down here, take a little bit of white or gesso, and make it just a little lighter, and this time I want you to add a touch of orange to it. And see, that makes it a little bit warmer. Okay, now, right up through here, be very careful, but I want you to come in and put some nice, clean highlights on things. 
like this. Just be very careful. tops of these. And don't be afraid to get enough light, see, that they really look three-dimensional. doing here is sort of suggesting the pathway that kind of goes on up into the background there. See how nice that is? It's just so neat to take just a few quick strokes. So folks, that goes, it shows to tell you that the fewer the strokes, the better the painting. A lot of times we think we have to labor and labor and labor and labor to get this painting to do what it's supposed to do. Keep in mind, they put long handles on a brush for a reason, and you stand back at a distance for a reason, and you just dry brush quick little touches like this. And if you put the right stroke in the right place at the right time, you're gonna create some magnificent things. That's the trick, is getting the right stroke in the right place at the right time. Sometimes we don't do that. All right, now then, going back to another area where we left off last time, and I was putting in a few distant, uh, not pine trees, but le uh, limbs. We need to get a few more of those in here so that our trees look a little more complete. Again, using sort of a gray color. These are just the connecting limbs in the distance. Some of you may have already done some of this because that was sort of your homework assignment was to go back in and work on this and get some limbs in here. I did not go back and add any because I like for you to see as much as possible what we do and why. But now I'm adding a few limbs kind of quickly here. Some of them are skinny. Has a nice touch to things. Okay, see, I'm adding just enough. You've got enough busyness here. Those are not going to add any busyness to it unless you get them real dark and real thick and heavy. These actually aid your eye in moving around. Well, that was a bad one. <clears throat> a little water here. Wipe that off would be good. Okay. Again, keeping your stroke very light. Okay. 
I think that's probably all. There's a couple over here, however, I think would be handy. Get in through here. Okay. This is what really adds the, the touch to this. All right, very good. <clears throat> okay, now yeah, we've got some more work to do here. Let's go ahead and take care of this little section here, and that's probably about all we'll have time for. And then we'll be able to finish up next, next time we meet. This section here, you can't see much. There's another big rock right there and some grasses and some little bushes. So let's go ahead and sort of do that, and let's start first with the rock. Take a little bit of blue, a little sienna, a touch of this gray <clears throat> and just a little bit of color. Okay, and then we'll come back and highlight this here in just a second. And I, I like to go back and soften edges and add little, well, I have colors on my brush that I need to use somewhere. And then very quickly, just take a look at that sunshine color that we mixed earlier for the highlights on these steps. Should still have some of that left. <clears throat> so you just highlight this rock. Okay, you see how we just had those little rocks there? Then you can come back with your number 10 bristle brush. And you can start adding some of the sunshine color from the green, uh, the leaves. And all you have to do there is just come back in sort of like this. Oh, I love the way that looks. That's just beautiful, this little corner, these little rocks right here. Now, it's a good idea also to go ahead and get some highlights right behind it. And then we will add a little color. We're not going to add a whole lot, but we'll take a little bit of the reddish, put in there, and some of the other colors will kind of help tie this together. I hope you've enjoyed the program. I certainly have enjoyed bringing it to you. And Azaleas. Now, this is that beautiful park that we, uh, I told you about where I grew up when I was young, a youngster, and it's just an incredible place. Now, we're gonna start down here. Let's get to our palette, and let's get your palette knife. And as usual, I'm using my same old dirty palette. Some of you wonder about that, but it works really well for me. Now, we'll take the cadmium red light, just a nice scoop of that, somewhere over here on your palette. Take a little bit of alizarin crimson, and a little touch of fresh, clean white. Now mix that together. So you have those three colors. You have the red, the alizarin crimson, and a little touch of white. Now all those colors together create this vivid, vivid, beautiful color. Now you're gonna need your number 10 bristle brush, and this time you want it to be fairly clean, so rinse it out really well. Take your brush, dip it straight in the paint. And I'll bring up the photograph here to show you. Again, remember now, <clears throat> the photograph shows us a lot of reds and things through here. Now you can see it a little closer up here with this. You can see it's a vibrant color. It's the same little 
cave here, but just a closer up view of it. And of course, this is the big tree that we're going to have finished up in there. But now, just take this color and dab it straight on like this. Be very careful, be very specific. You don't want it to be overdone, but you don't want to put, you know, such a small amount that it's not the feature. And really, folks, that's really what this is. This is the feature. That kind of lets them just drift out on the sidewalk just a little bit. Boy, isn't that beautiful? I love that. That's great. I hope you're having fun with that. Let's put some here. See how beautiful? That just really brings the painting to life. I just think that's an incredible thing. And what's neat about this is you can really see the complementary color scheme really coming to, to light here. Wow, that's neat. This does take a little time, so be patient with it, but it sure is worth it. See how that works there? That's just so neat. Now put just a little bit of that red down here in this foreground. Again, don't put too much. <clears throat> if it's too much, we'll take away from the rest of the painting, but a little bit here and there. Just very gently touch it so you create a softer shade of it. See, just scatter it just a little bit right in through there. Now, the next step here is to come back in and take care of our middle foreground here and build our little rock formation and then finish up our tree and then just miscellaneous details. Pretty much you're done with it. All right, so let's get and switch to our number six bristle brush now. Now, this is just a little flat, grassy area in the foreground that I really like. And you can see there's several shadows here, which we will probably put in there as well. But first, let's get the highlighted parts. You can see the real bright greenish color. And we'll do that with the, uh, well, actually, you just need to use your phthalo yellow green with a little touch of ultramarine blue here. Maybe a touch of white. And what you'll do is you'll sort of dry brush like this, just sort of dry brush, scumble. Like this, little scratchy patches of sunlight. Now be very careful, but now see, what you wanna do is make sure that as you put this on, you allow little dark areas from the underpainting to come through. That's what gives you a little depth and a little contrast and makes it so effective. See, I'm using sort of a, it's sort of a, 
a, a raised stroke to kind of create the suggestion of, you know, a little movement there in the ground. Using what you call the chisel edge of the side. opens up the, you might say, the door of, of brightness for your middle ground there. And just keep coming forward. And see, I'm gently dry brushing up against this peach color here. So there's no hard edge. Now, if you'll notice this, <clears throat> has that nice light spot right there in front. But you can't see any hard lines. You can't see where anything starts or ends. That's the beauty and the most important thing to remember about doing this. There should be no hard edges. Everything should have a subtle change from light to dark or from color to color. Now if you've gotten that blocked in, you see it's just sort of loose and rough and not real smooth, so you create a little texture of grass. Now let's come over here and block in our rocks now. Or we've already blocked them in. Let's start the highlighting process on our rocks. And that'll be done with your same brush, taking that gray color that you have here, which is the white, blue, and a little bit of burnt sienna. And you can add a little orange to it again to kind of warm it up. And you can add a little more white to it to uh, brighten it some. And of course, whatever mud is on your brush is, is good because then you can go ahead and tone it down some. Okay, now starting right here, like this, you start developing the shape of your rock. Now we'll come back and add some more darks here in a minute, but first just start with this. Maybe there's some big slabs of rock. And see these roots, and we were talking about looks like the... <laughs> The tree is growing right out of these rocks, and it's not. It's growing through the cracks and the crevices of the rocks, reaching down into the moist soil and the, the stuff in between the cracks. <clears throat> Although I have been on a lot of hiking trips and camping trips around the country, and some of these huge uh, pine trees that you see, some of the old pines, they look like they're growing right out of the rocks and the cliffs. 
don't know how they hold on, but they do. Okay, just keep building a nice soft. So you got a collection of rocks here, just like, like in the photograph. And let's see if I can find it again here. And you can see what I'm talking about. It's not real noticeable, but if you look close enough, you can begin seeing these rocks, nice big slabs of rock. After you kind of block those in, let's go back to our darker color. In this case, just take the gray. You can add a little blue to it, maybe a little touch of burnt sienna. Get a nice gray. You can add a little bit of umber, maybe. But you want it to be just a little darker than what you had there. Yeah, that's good. Then you can go ahead and three-dimensionalize these things. darken it just a tad. There go. See, we put little dabs of paint there. It looks like little cracks and crevices and things like that. Also, there's some little pieces of grass and brush growing up through there. Okay. Very good. I think we're just about there. Now then, we'll get off of that for just a moment. Rinse your brush. And as time passes here, we'll move on. And I'd like to see you pull just a little bit of grass out of these cracks here. So just take your blue and your green, your phthalo yellow green. Just put just a little grass like this coming out from around those trunks there. Like that, just enough to kind of separate the rocks so it's not so monotonous, just rocks. Although that's pretty much what the picture, the photograph shows. You don't always want to paint it that way necessarily. Okay, that's just enough to tie it together right there. Now let's put our shadow here. Now keep in mind the best way to approach the shadow is to take your charcoal and block it in first, like this. Because we want to make sure that we definitely get the shadow in the right place. And you never know. See, there may be trees way off over here on the canvas that you can't see. So don't be afraid. And this just adds to the character of the painting to put some shadows here as well. Okay. You just don't know what's over there. Blow off the excess charcoal test, and I'm gonna show you here how to mix your shadow color. This is something a lot of you haven't done much before, but it's a very purplish color. Purple is your natural shadow color, so you need to think about that. And let's go down here to the purple and the green. Now, right in this area where I was mixing, I've got this thalo yellow green where I had the blue. If you just add some purple to that, a little more green in with it, get sort of a grayish, brownish purple. And then you can come up here and just sort of dry brush in the shadow like this. So you keep it very horizontal. just coming on out a little bit further. Use a little thinner stroke here. Get some of the skinny ones. Take your finger if need be, like I'm doing here, to soften it if you get too much water. So if you get too much water, you get a hard line. Now 
Now I'm just putting some of the smaller limbs. I just think that really adds a nice touch to the painting. It just looks like the sun gently filtering through. That adds that little bit of character and interest to the painting. And then over here, we do the same thing. Okay, that's enough shadow, so you don't want to get too many, but you want to get enough to pull you right in through here. They hit the rock, you bounce back up, and you stay well focused right in the center part of the painting. Now, the next thing, of course, is to get this tree in here that I've been waiting to put in. And while really, it's not a major project, it's still important because it's what focuses, helps uh, frame in the painting. And of course, I love to paint trees, so I can't wait to get to trees, as you know. Now, if you'll take your, well, I'll tell you what, once you use your Number four, a little flat sable brush. We haven't used that yet, but this would be a good time to do that. And uh, just take a little umber and a little blue with some water and go ahead and get this trunk limb right on out like this. Don't be afraid. Now, this is where a lot of you get stage fright. Just come right on across. And I want you to notice also that a lot of these trees don't have any highlights on them, and the reason for that is because they're in shadow. So we're not going to put highlights on all of this, just maybe little textures and changes of color. But sometimes when you're in shadow, you're not going to have highlights hitting the edges of your trees. In fact, almost all of these, if you'll notice, with the exception of a few, like this one has a little thin highlight on it, but most of these don't have hardly any highlight. And they're just a dark shadow or a silhouette against the background. So that's what we're going to focus on here. I just love that limb coming across there. I think that's just incredible. Now, if you'll take your script brush, using the umber and the blue with a little bit of water to thin it down, <clears throat> what you're going to do here at this point is just to add a few minor limbs and small saplings and things across the base. So coming up here, so you'll have one that comes up may branch out and come behind. Now, not all of these have limbs on them, or leaves, I mean, because they're still so early in the spring. You know, some trees don't leaf out right away. For instance, pecan trees. We have almost 100 pecan trees where we live. And I've noticed that <clears throat> when all the other trees are blooming, the pecan trees still have nothing. In fact, they're just now, and it's, it's getting in the middle of the spring, they're still just now coming out good. It takes them a while to get bloomed out. So a lot of these trees, depending on what they are, will not be in full bloom yet, or in bloom at all even. Now in your part of the country, of course, it may be different. <clears throat> depending on how soon the weather gets warm and so forth. But up here, we're on pretty much of a standard four season calendar. Everything happens pretty regularly on time every year. Now, you see how nice that adds a touch to the painting? Now, up here it's nice to have a limb or two that kind of hangs back down into the painting. See, like this. And it's okay if you want to have one or two stragglers that kind of come out this way. It sort of breaks up this piece of space right through here, okay? That's very important. 
Also, coming back in this way, probably going to have one or two. Just kind of let them hang down. Okay, and I'm going to taper this right on across here. Just let it kind of fade out gradually. So it kind of all goes together, all sort of fits together. And then in the very foreground down here, <clears throat> you can see some little grasses growing up. I'll take my thalo yellow green with a little water. And I'll just start up coming up in the corner like this. You know, this little thing, we get our motor started here. And again, I haven't used it too often in this last few sessions, but remember the three P's. Don't piddle, play, or putter, okay? But you need to get a few of these weeds in here that will be contrasting and add a little bit of interest to the, to the painting up around the rocks over here where the tree trunk is would be nice. A few more in this corner. Make some that are fairly tall. This kind of helps to settle the rocks down, helps to settle the roots down, and everything kind of falls into place. Well, folks, as usual, we're running out of time, and I don't want to drag this out forever. There are a few things that you can do on your own that will be really exciting, and you can add some more color. If you want to add some purple flowers, some other colors, uh, some little blue ones if you want to. I mean, you can have a variety of things in here, but the main focus is on the pink red and the white uh, zellias and the dogwoods and the red bud trees and remembering keeping your contrast alive and healthy and your color scheme in its complementary form so i hope you've enjoyed this it's been great fun bringing this to you it's a real joy to be able to bring these kind of paintings to you that are so full of many learning things as well as a great color so i hope you can finish it up and hang it on your wall okay we're going to start a brand new one the next time we meet so i'll look forward to seeing you then hope you've enjoyed it god bless you stay inspired keep painting and i'll see you again real soon on another inspirational painting Today's lesson and previous lessons are available on videotape. For more information or a brochure, call 1-800-822-1970. Video lessons by Jerry Yarnell are available for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling. Each lesson consists of 60 minutes or more of finely demonstrated techniques. To order, call 1-800-822-1970. Most major credit cards are accepted. Broadcasting.